Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing marvelously well. We're big, we're bad, we're back, and we're dressed in black. So it's lovely to have you all back on another FAC Friday. FAC, of course, stands for Frequently Asked Questions, or for fact's sake. All right, that's an old joke. I've told it many times. Anyway, this is going to be a fun week. A couple of things. It is the Produce Like a Pro summer sale. We have an academy, if you don't actually know anything about that. There's about 2,500 incredible people in there. It's a wonderful community. It's incredibly supportive. I don't know if there's a better place for that, where people come together, they mix songs. We have like 80 or 100 multi-tracks in there and lessons, et cetera. And people mix them, and then we mix critique them every Friday, which means concurrently at this time, I'm actually listening to other people's mixes, and we're making notes. We also listen to your productions and your mixes of songs that you're working on, and we do critiques on there as well. It's a really, really incredible place. And there is a special summer sale going on at the moment, so click on the link down below to get a 50% off discount. Yes, a whopping 50% off. All right, let's do some questions from the Frequently Asked Questions. Warren, I have a pretty bad version of Meniere's disease, an equilibrium disorder that progressively degrades hearing. So I struggle with both tracking and mixing. Everything is in the box on mixes. Even with the cards being stacked against me, I don't imagine living without being a musician, a songwriter, an engineer by necessity on fixed income. I know you aren't a therapist, but is there anything in a way of advice you would give to a person that stubbornly won't give up their passion, even when the odds are totally against them? What a wonderful, wonderful question. Well, without getting too personal, I have a member of my immediate family who also has Meniere's disease. So I have some firsthand experience. I know it can be quite debilitating. You know, I think the obvious thing that you've probably heard many, many people tell you is Beethoven, Beethoven, and Beethoven. I think we have a Beethoven over my shoulder. Don't let anything stop you making music, playing music, recording music. Meniere's disease is a horrible, debilitating thing, especially if it's getting worse and worse. However, I've worked with producers, engineers, and mixers that are in their 60s and 70s and are still working. And they don't have any high-frequency hearing left. And Meniere's, as I know, starts off reducing a high-frequency range much, much quicker. And you get like these dips and, you know, the person I'm talking about, one of their ears is at about 2K, 3K, has got a massive, massive dip. But the reality is, is that if you've got the experience and the knowledge and understanding of how to do your job, you can work around it. The beautiful thing about working in DAWs is we have visual cues. Now, we often joke about the visual cues in DAWs actually being a hindrance because people use the visual cues to time things up and don't listen to groove and feel. If you haven't yet already, go and check out yesterday's video, which was a Motown track we did to demo the Heritage Audio Motor City EQ. I'll put a link down below. Won't you, Eric? He says, yes. The man from Del Monte sitting over there says, yes. Anyway, so the thing about it is, in your instance, it could be an amazing saving grace because you don't need to be boosting high end that you're not hearing. And if you've got a visual cue and you're seeing that this high end is really, really exaggerated, but you're not hearing it because your Meniere's disease is dipping in that areas. That is a really useful tool. So don't be afraid to use EQs that have spectrum analyzers built in. I know the modern waves EQs have them built in, and of course, FabFilter have them built in as well. There's plenty of EQs. If you want to use a plugin like Soothe 2 by OX Sound, the great thing about that is on its default setting, it's just going to duck some of that aggressive high mids. So there are tools that will help you out. Getting back to my point about working with some of the older producers, engineers, and mixers, I've worked with them and they can't hear those particular high frequencies, but they have visual cues 
and they also have acquired knowledge. Meaning, if they're leaning over to their console and they are cranking 7K, it's a combination of acquired knowledge with the good visual cues and you can still record and mix your own music. I would do the best that you can, use the visual tools, and then just have somebody you can run the final mix by. And I guarantee with a little bit of to and fro, you will get into a comfortable place where with your visual stimulation from the plugins, et cetera, that you're using, and maybe some outside assistance on a final mix or two, or your mastering engineer giving you tips of where maybe you've overcompensated in certain areas, you will get into a place where you'll get great results. Honestly, I really strongly believe that because I'm working with guys that don't hear tambourines, that don't hear shakers. Seriously. There is a famous mixer who recently said, I don't hear a shaker. I don't have that high frequency left. That's pretty telling when a famous mixer says that. But you listen to the famous mixer and that their mixes still sound amazing because they have acquired knowledge, because they're not reaching over to their SSL and boosting so much high end that it just becomes completely unbearable. They know when something is too much. So don't give up. Be persistent. I know full well that you can do it and that get yourself into a community of people that is supportive and will help you out. If you're not a producer like a Pro Academy member, join it. If you don't want to join it, that's fine. Find people around you that can help you because that's what I want and that's what I strive for, a community of people that helps each other out. And I know full well that there's so many talented people out there that have physical disabilities, mental disabilities, different things that can, they could use as an excuse to hold themselves back. And they have chosen to overcome those things and seek help from other people and really get great results. All I can say is I'm supportive of you. I appreciate the great question. I have an understanding of Meniere's disease myself, not through my hearing, but from somebody in my immediate family. I'm not gonna out them because I haven't spoken to them about it. But the point is, is like, it shouldn't stop you from making music and making great music. So, yes. I wanted to talk about this guitar again. I wanted to talk about it because it's my favorite guitar and because we're doing a giveaway. There will be a link down below where you can enter the giveaway. This is the, what is it called again? It's called the RSE20. It is actually at Sweetwater for $499. When I did the review on it, I thought it was 786 because that was the list price. And we usually do a guitar of the week and Eric and I were thinking, well, what guitar should we do? And Eric's like, well, why don't we just Talk about this one again, because it's amazing and I love it. And we're doing a giveaway on it. So nice. Silly, it's so gorgeous. So this is my current favorite guitar. It feels like it's gonna be my favorite guitar for a long time. Chambered, the non-coil tap, coil tap is a high pass filter. Absolutely love it. So don't forget to enter to win this beautiful guitar. Okay, so last week we did talk to Matt Lang and on our last Fact Friday, and he talked about side chaining. So this question came up, and I quote, what is side chaining? Side chaining is when you have, say a compressor, which is typical, that is being triggered from another source. So, Think about this, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for those people who don't understand what side chaining is. Let's say we have a big pad, like a massive pad sound, just kind of just grinding along, absolutely massive. And it's so huge that you want to put maybe a bass line in it, which also lives in that low register. Now you can do a couple of different things. You could take a compressor, and every time that maybe the pulsating bass going boom, boom, boom plays, 
What you'll do is you'll take the compressor, put it on the big pad, and then you put the key function, the sidechain function, depending on what your plugin has, and you set that to come from the pulsating bass sound, for instance. You'll usually set up an auxiliary or you know, some kind of sub that sends a signal from the pulsating bass to the compressor. Now, the compressor will dip every time that pulsating bass goes, oh, 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 it will dip. So this big fat bass will be audible over the big fat synth pad because the volume on the synth pad will drop. Now, that's the most basic form of side chaining. I often talk about using it when I've got a lead guitar player and a singer battling at the end of the song. And maybe I want a screaming lead guitar to just duck a couple of dB, barely anything, but just a bit when the singer's like ad-libbing over them so that they don't live in exactly the same place. Or maybe the other way around. Maybe you want the lead guitar player to duck over the vocalist. Either way, you use one to control the volume of the other. You side chain. Put a compressor on one source and you trigger it from the other. So whenever the guitar player plays, it will duck accordingly. And what I love about it is it will duck according to how dynamic the source is. It's not just a fixed amount. So you can get a really beautiful blend and an interplay between the two instruments, the vocals, the guitar, whatever two instruments they might be. Now, there's another more fashionable way of using it, and that is with dynamic or multi band compression. Meaning, what you can do is you can send a source to it, but it could be just ducking one part of the audio spectrum rather than the continuous volume just coming down every time the bass plays. Let's just say you want to come in and create a little hole in a dynamic EQ that was just around sort of 80 to 120, a nice kind of wide area that would just duck that element of where the bass was playing. Rather than ducking all of the volume of the whole thing, you're just gonna duck the area of low end that needs to be pushed back a little bit inside of that big paddy sound. That is a very, very popular thing to do in in EDM and in like modern metal, getting into that because you can really start sculpting things so that all instruments are heard at all times and the track remains huge and loud and slamming. Those genres in particular, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, people are removing EQ points and fitting other instruments in. The problem is if you do it with a static EQ, i.e. you cut out a chunk for something to fit, when the other sound isn't playing, you've just got a sound that's had a chunk cut out of it, and it might not sound that good. But if you keep the full range of the original signal and then just duck it when the other sound is playing, that will just keep the motion, the energy, the volume, the amplitude of the, amplitude of the track playing consistently at all times. So that is sidechain. Well, the last one, which I love and I use all the time, is side-chaining a vocal to its effect. What do I mean by that? You take a lead vocal, you send it to a reverb. You send it to a delay. You send it to multiple reverbs, multiple delays. The problem is when a singer is singing, those reverbs and delays can build up. So you'll get a singer going, I don't know. And on the background, you go like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. All these delays going, and it starts to become mud. So your natural inclination is to just bring the reverbs and delays down a little bit when the singer's singing, and then when the singer stops, bring them back up. So you might get like a phrase like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, the delay going afterwards, which doesn't work in the middle of the vocal because it's a muddy mess of delays bouncing backwards and forwards, but would be great at the end of each phrase. And also fill in in the breaths between, so there's just this continual energy. So how do we do that? We take our reverbs and we take our delays, we put compressors on them. Some re reverbs and delays have compressors built into them. But if they don't, you just put a compressor after the reverb and delay, you then send from the lead vocal, even though the lead vocal is actually feeding the reverbs and delays, it also feeds the sidechain function on the, the compressor. Meaning whenever the lead vocal sings, it creates reverbs and delays, but it also goes into the compressor which ducks while the singer is singing, and then when the singer stops singing, comes back up and all the reverbs and delays are back in there. And you can set that subtly to just duck a little bit, or you can have it more dramatic. The point is you can do some really beautiful things that will give you this illusion of reverb and delay on the vocal at all times, but comes to life and blooms when the singer stops singing. It's a great effect to have like a hello, like a reverb around the outside of it. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful effect. 
So I hope you enjoyed that. Please don't forget to enter to win the beautiful Yamaha RSE20. Trust me, if you win it, you will not be upset. You'll be very, very happy. I mean, for a $500 guitar, I don't know if I played a better guitar. I don't know if I played many better guitars on the planet, let alone one for $499. Um, I've been hearing all over the place that they're selling out like hotcakes, um, which doesn't surprise me because they're so good. But if you get a chance to get one, get one. Thank you everybody for watching. Oh, don't forget to check out the Motown track. We did the Heritage Audio um, Motor City EQ demo. Download the multi-tracks to that as well. Listen for yourself, see what you think of the EQ. Um, we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and of course, there is the summer sale. You can join Produce Like a Pro Academy. You can go to producelikeapro.com, sign up there. Also, if you don't want to join, you can get onto the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. Thank you. So long. Farewell. Auf Wiedersehen. Au revoir. Adios. Adio. Ciao. Um, Tut scenes. Um, goodbye. So long. Farewell. Auf Wiedersehen. Au revoir.